I think I realized there was something quite different about me when I was 14 and first started to experience depression. I would feel really unhappy on the inside, but I always wore this beautiful mask so everyone saw me as a happy person. From a very early age, I had a vivid imagination and would make up happy stories, even though happy things were not happening. There is definitely a direct link between events in my life and the symptoms I started to experience. Because of family circumstances, I spent a lot of time in care during my childhood. My mother's boyfriend molested me when I was about nine. And then my mother's third husband abused me when I was 14. It took a long time for me to realize it was abuse. I learned to disassociate. I played three roles. I was my father's partner when my mom was out, a child when my mom was home, and a normal teenager with friends. I believe traumatic experiences were the reasons why I experienced mental unwellness and first attempted suicide when I was 15. I came to New Zealand at 19 and thought all my problems were left behind. Of course, that's not how it works and my problems came with me. I got married but felt depressed every winter and when I was 23, I attempted suicide again. By the time I was 25, things got so bad, I was put into hospital. I was diagnosed with manic depression. I had no idea what that meant. They gave me uh, lithium, but I reacted badly to it and had to come off it. Instead, they prescribed lots of sleep, healthy food and multivitamins. I loved being in hospital because it was like how peer support is now. It was the only time I didn't have to pretend. I didn't have to do anything I didn't want to. You didn't just sit around smoking and doing nothing. They had groups and classes, and it was a place you could rest and learn. I also listened to other people's story and learned from their experiences. I found out there were a lot more people than I had realized who had been abused. Four months later, I was able to go home and it wasn't until I was 31 that I crashed again. This time, I heard voices. The first voice was someone hunting me, which was very scary. I thought all foods were poisoned, so I only drank boiled water and got very thin. I was admitted back into hospital, but instead of treating uh, the voices and the hallucination, they treated me for anorexia. They would watch me eat, which fed the whole psychosis, because I already thought people were trying to poison me. I didn't want any medication, because of my earlier experience with lithium. I didn't realize there were new medication uh, that didn't have the same side effects. I slowly got better, and I was allowed to go home just before Christmas. At that time in my life, I was living alone and went home to an empty house. The social worker came round and saw that I had no food and took me shopping. She organized a food parcel and I just about fell over because in all these years, I had never had this kind of support, ever. She was amazing. She would take me out for drives and all of a sudden, everything turned around and I became well. For 17 years, I stayed well. I did this by creating structure and routine in my life. I went back to study. I met my second husband and I did lots of exercise. I had periods of depression, but never to the point I became suicidal or didn't achieve what I wanted to achieve. Then, when I was 47, I was sleeping poorly and started hearing voices again. Things just got worse and worse. The TV and radio were giving me messages and because I wasn't willing to take medication, I ended up in hospital again. One day, one of the patients asked me if I wanted to go home and I said, of course. She said, take your medication. And I said, I don't want to take medication. And she said, but you can stop it when you get home. I hadn't thought of that. 
So I took the medication because it was the only way I was going to go home. It really helped and I was back home in four weeks time. I slowly came off the antipsychotics and reduced my mood stabilizer. The voices were still there when I became really distressed. Then when the people on TV spoke to me or I started getting messages about things I had I have to do. In the past, I never questioned why I had to go and do these things. Now, I've learned that I don't have to listen to the voices. I, don't have to listen to the voices. I just decided one day not to do what they were telling me to, and nothing happened. So I thought, okay, cool. The next time, I don't have to actually do what they say. The biggest thing that has helped my recovery is support, whether it's from family, friends, or through peer support. The more you talk about what is happening to you, the more you can find people who understand you.